Revolting. Revolting what? Oh, revolting news. This is Thule here and uh, Lanny, the wizard behind the camera and all our magnificent far-flung uh, technology. Today we're going to give you an unusual uh, treat. We hope, instead of a treatment, remember that? A treat instead of a treatment. Uh, I'm going to read you a uh, chapter of my uh, forthgoing 60s novel about an imaginary rock group called uh, The Fox. Yeah, this is uh, at my agent's now, and good luck to her. Um, this is chapter four. Well, let me, uh, let me tell you, the three main uh, characters in the rock group are uh, Yuri Yankovic, Red Blaze, and uh, Ben Woozer. And uh, this chapter is called The Painted Turd, sort of a play on... Uh, Tom Wolfe's The Painted Word. You all remember Tom Wolfe. And um, I think you'll recognize some of the other people here. It's about a party. Red Blaze led the troop of fucks and their wives, boards, and hangers-on slowly up the inclined ramp into the fabled quarters of Anatole Asshole the new rage artist of the day. Anatole's headquarters were in an old stable in the East 30s. The place had been rechristened D, letter D, livery. The huge, dark, single room was entered through a narrow stall with straw on the floor and a strange smell, which Yuri recognized instantly as a pleasant blend of fresh piss and old horseshit. You wonder where they got the fresh piss from. The place was packed full. Strobes were flashing and strange noises were coming from an improvised stage in the center. All around the strip brick walls were huge hangings of Anatole's latest works. The body fluid series. Starting from one corner, there was the sputum triptych. Plain, in one panel, barely visible shine on a gray background. On the second panel, a green and white composition called Madama Influenza. And on the far right, a frothy red and white antipasto of high relief substances termed simply TBC. The next painting, very longitudinal and in a thick Rococo gilt frame, consisted of a series of about 20 white handkerchiefs in several stages of unfolding to which a wide variety of boogers had been attached, some still veritably glistening. Yuri wondered how this state had been maintained and was told later by Chester Fields that Amy, as he was nicknamed, had developed a special kind of fixative out of a mixture of Manischewitz white wine and old dog urine. Yuri's ears were now attracted to a sort of hissing sound, and in another corner of the room, he found the marvelous mobile called Painter's Pissoir. An ingenious motorized waterfall raised a yellow-looking liquid up a series of catchment rollers to a 15-foot height, where the fluid dropped in a gentle arc illumined by a floodlight placed beneath into a large white urinal into which the viewing public, male and female, were invited to contribute a sample. Ben Wooza tried it but complained of getting drenched in a fine piss spray and there were no women contributors. Emily, Abe's chick, as we used to say, complaining that there was no seat for women and the whole idea stunk of machismo. Scattered at random throughout the whole floor, on or surrounded by peeling old saddles, were huge gold and silver sculpted models of human turds, some as high as seven feet or more, and some as wide as three feet around. 
and piled to a circling mass of over a yard high. Ben was once more amazed at the genius of human variety and said a soft fundamentalist prayer of thanksgiving to himself while tilting back a huge slug of Harper's and Brothers Kentucky bourbon. Just above a flashing strobe near the toilet, Blaze gazed with envy at two works. Red November, a collage of used Kotex and wads of bloody cotton and unfinished plywood, and Birth of a Nation, consisting of seven scumbags in various states of deterioration with what looked like real sperm bubbling over from several. Two obviously had broken at the tip and were dripping babies toward the bottom of the frame. He nudged Mildred, his mysterious wife. That's art, he said, and it sells for seven grand a spurt. All the hanging pieces were covered with asshole's trademark. Sheets of clear, glossy, plastic. So were the entire wall, ceiling, and floor done in vast sheets of the same hypnotic, vertiginous substance. Anatole himself, standing near the front windows, smoking and greeting guests that were brought to him, was wearing a plain denim <coughs> rhinestone-studded suit covered completely with clear plastic. His plastic pink-colored glasses had another layer of his layer of his transparo, as he called it, glued on top of their lenses. He turned slowly as Red approached. Hi, Anatole, said Red. Good party. How's the chef? Ha ha. Anatole smiled weakly. Mildred Blaze poked Red in the ribs. Oh yeah. Anatole, my wife, Mildred. Anatole gazed at a delicate, shy, brown-curled creature wearing a plastic veil from her eyes down to the bottom of her neck. She wore a gold lame skirt and a tight silver blouse cut so low that the tops of her sweet cherry nipples popped out occasionally, and she had to embarrassingly keep shoving them back. Anatole turned and introduced his director, Paul Mall, that's P-A-U-L, M-A-U-L. And one of his actresses, Old Gold, a stout, intense woman in her 50s. The talk turned to the movie they were planning to make together about a Rodeo Road Company stuck in Vietnam and involved with opium smuggling and the NLF. Meanwhile, Yuri, Having drunk deeply of the LSD punch being siphoned out of a horse trough by the ladleful, by a cute brunette asshole groupie, Virginia Slim, whom Yuri had goosed several times, causing a great floor loss of punch, and needing to heed an urgent call of nature, he headed reelingly towards the toilet. The plaster walls of the toilet had been hacked away and covered instead with the transparent plastic so that, quote, the truth shall be revealed, end quote, as the sign that hung over the toilet's entrance stated. Yuri waited his turn and watched in fascination as a tall, beautiful Asian model took a crap in the transparent toilet bowl. And Alex Rayburn, the infamous laundry list poet of St. Mark's church, that's M-A-R-X, this church, as Alec fucked in a convincing manner Helen of Troy, New York. Rick Tawney, the Fox's bass player's very nubile girlfriend, while standing up in the shower stall behind the transparent curtains. Twice. He finally sat down wearily and started to strain. <coughs> Here I sit, broken-hearted, paid a quarter and only fought it. He got up and was just starting to pull up his pants when, flash, someone snapped his photo. 
Rex Ressler, the Fox photographer, had brought his Polaroid and was selling colored toilet shots at $2.75 each. Grumbling, he forked over the money. And as soon as Ressler turned, ripped the photo to shreds. No one was going to blackmail Yuri Yankovic. He turned toward the bandstand where the satin assholes were now swinging into their wind-up no number. Cherry Cola Blues. Their drummer, Babe Dietrich, a sex changeur of unknown origin or destination, had a transparent bass drum which he, question mark, was playing, attached by some elaborate metal contraption to the top of her head. He also affected a 25-cent plastic devil mask from Woolworths. The drum was a striking effect, but detracted somewhat from the lead female singer, the stunning crow-haired persona of mixed Persian-Siamese extraction, named Icon. Icon was completely nude, except for a long, thick green snake which she twisted suggestively around her breasts and inserted at various times into her mouth, vagina, or at the very climax of the song, into her asshole, which had a thick patch of black satin completely surrounding it. Cherry cola, cherry cola, cherry cola up my hola, cherry cola, up my hola, life's a bola, cherry cola, up my hola. The lights came up and Icon got into a dressing gown and walked off the stage to a mild scattering of applause and a sharp whistle from a small woman in the back. The lights went dim again and someone put a tape of the fuck's latest album on. The strobes went on full tilt. Virginia Slim poured a pint of vodka and a gallon of PVC horse tranquilizer in the punch, and the party rocked on. It was a great party, and several bodies were already stacked unevenly in the corner near the toilet. Yuri, by now racked out of his mind from the sunshine LSD in the punch, rolled over to the movie makers group where Red seemed to be having some disagreement over the ideology of the forthcoming flick. Asso was saying, Red, we agreed to call the combined groups the fucking satin assholes, okay. But I've got to be firm about Paul's point. They cannot be on the side of the Viet Cong. They've got to be Democrats, or at the most, and if we decide to make them a hillbilly band, they can be um, uh, populist, but... Listen, asshole, Red interrupted. The future of humanity is at stake. When are you fucking asexuals going to realize that? Which side are you on? Hmm? To which Anatole replied, raising his voice slightly. Neither. I don't have to choose. I cultivate my garden. At this point, a huge uproar was heard at the punch trough. And after rocking a while back and forth, the whole trough went down with a terrific rumble, clatter, splash, drenching Virginia Slim and Ben Woozer in a gooey mixture of scotch, rum, vodka, LSD, sunshine, PVC, atropine, tiger balm, fool's gold, razor blades, watermelon, stramonium datura, and cherry cola. Fuck! Hey, Rube, shouted Ben. Hey, Rube, hey, Rube, hey, Rube. And the fucks roused themselves in immediate pandemonium to defend their comrade, who was being puzzled by various, pummeled by various cigarette brands racing in from around the loft. What the fuck happened, screamed Red. They caught Ben pouring a whole bottle of Alka-Seltzer into the punch, said Yuri, jumping as Virginia Slim goosed him. A whole bottle? Side red, ducking as a clear plastic trumpet mute came sailing off the bandstand. Six tablets would have been enough. 
The exit lights were doused by an unknown hand, and the battle raged fitfully for a short period with several feminine-type screams of passion piercing the strobe-infested night. The door to the ramp was pushed open to reveal a blaze of daylight at the end of the tunnel. The outnumbered fuckhorde walked fast, some running, maneuvering themselves out with some dignity. Yuri, the last, was trying to shut the door to pursuers when two feet of shit sculpture hit him in the face and then dropped with a clay-like thud to the floor. Yuri rushed to reach the others and wiping his eyebrows and cheeks and passing his hand over his nose, hissed. Shit! It's real! Just then, already outside on the sidewalk, another huge clump of shit sculpture dropped from the first floor, brushed Red's wave coiffure, and draping itself over his right shoulder, started dripping down vaguely over his new scholar trousers and white suede shoes. He looked up to see the devilish cherubic Anatole smiling gently at the open window. Red shook his fist fiercely. You, 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 you Warhol! Yeah. Hi, Tilly. Hi. Well, you ought to condition my coffee. You ought to soup in my tea. <laughs> You make that up, Tuli? Yeah. That's a good song. I'll have a soup sandwich. All right. And, uh... Soup sandwich on what? And a fart bird. And a what? Fart bird? Fart bird. <laughs> Sounds good. I'll have a soup sandwich on Jewish rye. Yeah. And a fart burger on... Is it kosher? Yeah. A fart burger on... Uh, uh, what are you having to eat? Uh, what am I gonna have to eat? Yeah. Well, I'm I'm gonna have a mushroom barley soup. Yeah. I'm gonna have a broccoli finish. Broccoli finish. Here it is. Here's the mushroom barley soup. All right. Better get oh, a picture. Oh, that looks really good. Take okay. its picture. Okay. Oh, it's get. Oh, that's a huge. Oh my God, that's a huge bowl. Look at that. It, it's taking over. The, oh my God. Let's see what mine looks like. Oh my God! No, mine is getting smaller and smaller. Oh, whoa! It's disappearing. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna shut it off. It's called chameleon, or the time service song, the belly dance, the vicar of prayer. In the winter, I'm a Buddhist. In the summer, I'm a nudist. In Jerusalem, I'm a In Hellfire Club, the crudest. Come here, young. Come here, young. I'm a 
existential with cold girls. That's not essential. Not get D. My lead the school on the street. I play the fool. Come in, young. Come in, young. Good evening, friends. Goodbye, enemies, enemies, enemies. Enemies list. Uh, the U.S. has a very long enemies list. Okay. Uh, in the time remaining to me, I'd like to get through as many as I can of these wonderful, expressive, uh, uh, what is this sign? It's uh, the fuck you sign. It, uh, it's an aggressive sign. It should really be sort of you know, half a victory sign. Yeah, it's half a victory sign, but it's uh, it shows you how perverted we are, since uh, we think of fucking as something bad. Anyway, here's I'm going to we go through as many as we can in time allowed. Uh, you all recognize this? It's uh, ex governor, ex person, ex life person Rockefeller. Yeah, Larry Rockefeller's uncle, right? Yeah. While he was running for president, he didn't like what someone said on the campaign trail. It was a great shot, I thought. And here's uh, Bush. Uh, it's a sort of ambiguous statement, but I think he something he'd like to do. It's a little ambiguous here. Um, crude oil, finger in the nose, tongue out, and of course the finger in the air. Uh, these are uh, off-duty police officers react to residents' taunts yesterday outside the Bronx courthouse. New York's finest. Here's a, I have to read you this. This is uh, just recently from Yugoslavia. Major General Louis W. McKenzie of Canada, the military commander, told reporters today that he was, quote, sick and tired and caught of driving through the streets of Sarajevo and seeing people along the roadway sticking their fingers in the air in a gesture of hostility. I wonder what that gesture was. Here's an interview in one of my wonderful favorite magazines. That's for them. This sign language this is a little too complex. Uh, well, let's just focus in on them if we can. Here's a... Here's a... We might have to come back to this. Uh, Here's a gesture of, uh, what is it called? It's uh, obscene signs, miscellaneous. This is East European and the Levant. This is uh, Germany, let's see, Arabs, Mexico, uh, U.S. Um, this is Portugal, Spain, and Sicily. Here's a never mind, oh no, it means never mind. And that's from the International Dictionary of Sign Language. Uh, here you can send it to, uh, you know who, the fickle, flying fickle finger of fate. Yeah, cops gave the gesture to, a, uh, Koch gave the gesture to a heckler. This is for you, the mayor said, as his audience erupted in laughter. This is uh, Sam Donaldson, you remember him, he survived Yugoslavia yesterday. This is Jody Powell. That's a marvelous shot, I think. Uh, here's just a towel with that, a hand towel. We'll skip that, you don't need a close-up. This is sell to officers, se uh, sell this new idea, sincere token of appreciation. Sell to officers, homes, clubs for steady profits. This is from Rights in Conflict, uh, federal report. Uh, here's uh, here is demonstrations salute the chief in their own fashion. This is uh, Nixon getting the um, bird, as it's called, and some Washington demonstration. I don't see if you can. Where is the finger? It's here. Here it is. You got it right. This is one I made up. 
Uh, there's Churchill doing the V. If you do it the other way, it means fuck you, but uh, here's he's doing it at the end. Uh, that was after I found out that he issued a secret order that it was okay to bomb civilian targets in uh, France during World War II as long as you didn't kill more than 150 Frenchmen in one, in one bombing raid. You remember this guy. Uh, it comes natural to him, Morton. This is an Arab woman sticking her tongue out really mild woman. This is a Russian woman selling stuff but I, uh, in, a, in a black market or semi-black market, the gray market. I think she's telling us something else though too. This is a modification of, we're going to run through now, we're running out of time. This is a modification of a famous poster. It's an anarchist idea of a red army soldier telling you in the 20s telling you what to do. Tak povedni. Take care, I think. Well, so, so goes it. Anyway, it's a little doctoring there. This is uh, some Italian anarchist. She's having fun. You can see she's having fun. This is uh, Rome, where this is where the, guy, uh, the emperor says thumbs down, and the, uh, this is what the gladiator is. Uh, he's got a thumb up. It almost looks like his tri, tri, tri sore trident. Here's another rose, another... Uh, you remember this guy. And um, let's see, uh, Jackie is next month. Jackie Mason denied that he ever gave the finger to uh, Ed Sullivan. Just ending, ending out here. Oh, this, is some, this is some, yeah, that's too bad. This is some gay people ganging it up uh, from the Dolce Musto column. Uh, this is... Uh, People on Flatlands Ave Avenue saluting a, an anti-discrimination parade. This is Frank. I don't know what he's doing. And this, uh, let me save that one. Oh, this will be the last one. Um, let's give them some free plug. Working assets. They tell you, 20 years later, we've given people better way to put the fi this finger to use. You see the guy? Well, I happen to know that the woman who just bought working assets is a, a soda pop millionaire. I forget, I forget the brand name one of the health brands that I, I and so she made her a lot of money uh, selling fake health soda to people and uh, she bought out working assets she bought out working assets because she as she was quoted in some business journal I read she felt it was she could make uh, a much better profits from that too uh, also helping people you know people subscribe to this service because they're helping people meanwhile they're also helping the owner make more profits, as she said. Okay, that will conclude. Uh, and uh, uh, how about this signal? I, I don't know. It's supposed to mean something nice. 